In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot a 360 degree panorama, and then we're going to join it all together and create a little planet inside of Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Take and Make Great Photos is brought to you by Adorama, your one-stop shop for all your photography needs. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that really does offer absolutely everything for us photographers. Now, today I've come out to the local village church where I live. This is in the centre of the village, but today I'm going to turn this church, not into the centre of the village, but into a planet in its own right. Yes, today I'm creating a little planet effect. First of all, we need to take the photos and then we're going to use Photoshop to join them all together to create the final image. OK, before I go and take the photos, let's just run through the equipment I'm going to use. Now, to get my little planet effect, I need to shoot a 360 degree panorama, so a huge wide panorama. So my camera of choice, well, it's going to be my Canon 60D, and the reason for that is because of the lens I'm using. Today, I'm going to be using my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter lens. So why am I using this lens? Well, firstly, it's an extreme wide angle lens. 10 millimeters is the equivalent of 16 millimeters on a full frame camera. And because it's a Sigma lens, you can get this lens for pretty much whatever camera brand you have. And the quality is pretty darn good too. I've had this one for a number of years and it's survived life, well, life's little knocks and bumps as I've used it. OK, so that's the most important bit, the lens. Now all we need to do is just go and find a location, set up and take the photos. OK, so I've picked this location for a couple of reasons. The main one being that the, the church is sticking very much up in the air. So it's, it's against the, the skyline rather than being part and parcel of the skyline. But also I love this path. And when we make our little planet, this path is going to become uh, like a motorway, a freeway straight through the middle of our planet. At least that's, that's what I'm seeing in my head. Let's see if we can actually make that happen. Now, before we can take any photographs, we need to do a little bit of work setting things up. So I'm going to be working in aperture priority mode and I'm just going to take a general reading for my exposure. So in aperture priority mode, I'm going to choose F8 because the depth of field is, well, huge at a 10 millimeter lens. I'll be on ISO 200. Let's see what the camera says for the shutter speed. And the camera reckons about a hundredth of a second. So I'm going to dial those into manual f8 one hundredth of a second iso 200 and i'm going to lock that off now i'm going to focus up the camera okay and then i'm going to put the camera into manual focus as well so everything's in manual settings everything's locked down except one thing and that's the white balance so i'm going to choose a sunny white balance because well, frankly, that's me being optimistic. It's not sunny, it's freezing cold, and there's even a little bit of snow in the air today. But hey, think on the bright side, think sunny. Okay, so sunny white balance. Okay, so we're good to go. One last thing, I'm gonna turn my camera 90 degrees to the side so I get a, uh, an upright individual photograph for my little 360 degree panorama because I need to get everything in. I need to make sure I get the top of the church in and not cropped off on my panorama and that might be a problem. Let's see. Okay, so we're just going to go around once and take a series of photographs. Here we go. So framing this up and I take a series of images. Each image has to overlap so around we go. And I'm going to work my way round. Really important, the tripod stays rock steady, doesn't move. And if you want to find out more about how to do a panorama, then check out Adorama TV, where I did, I think it was the second episode, where we did panoramas in detail. So there's lots of information on the Adorama Learning Centre. And back to the beginning again. Now, when I join those photographs together in Photoshop, have a look at the end result. Can you see the top of the trees? They've been cropped off because I haven't got enough height, even on a 10 millimeter lens. So how am I gonna get around that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two panoramas and join them all together. So I'm actually gonna shoot with my camera, not angled at 90 degrees like it is here, but using the, uh, the tripod head that I've got, there's a little, little sort of lever on the side and that allows me to tilt my camera up and down. So I'm going to tilt it up 20 degrees in the air and we're going to take the same panorama again. So let's go. 
Okay, so around we go. Let's start here. Two, three. And back to the beginning. And what I end up with is a, well, a panorama that's shot up in a high angle, but of course there's not really much foreground. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt this 20 degrees in the other direction and I'm gonna run it round again. So around we go, same starting point, and around we go. Now, again, during this process, make sure your tripod doesn't move. The less movement you can get from your tripod, the better. So around we go, and obviously make sure that your individual photographs overlap. And back to the beginning. So what I've got there are two rows of panoramas, but Photoshop will be able to handle that absolutely fine. Both rows got exactly the same exposure. Both rows overlap top and bottom and side to side. So all we need to do now is to get these photographs into Photoshop and join them together. And we're gonna do that right now. So the first thing we need to do is just make a standard panorama. So let's open up all of the images that we shot for our panorama. Go to File, Automate and Photo Merge. And on Photo Merge here, I'm just gonna use the Auto button because it basically it works every single time. I'm also just gonna open the files. Sometimes you might need to tick Geometric Distortion Correction if you have a problem with it joining together, if your panorama doesn't quite stitch correctly, then that's a good one to use. Uh, similarly, if it doesn't work on auto, try the cylindrical option. But just give it a moment or two, and this will create our complete 360-degree panorama, plus a little bit extra, and we'll look at how we get rid of that in a moment. Okay, so there we go. Here it comes, nearly there. And there's our 360-degree panorama. Okay, let's go to layer and then we'll merge the visible layers so we get rid of the individual layers and just end up with one single image. Now, we've shot a 360 degree panorama, but it's actually slightly wider. But it, if we join this together as a little planet, we'd have a problem with repeating edges. You can see the trees here, for example, are the same trees as on the other side just here. So uh, we need to make sure that the right edge is exactly the same as the left edge. And I do that by going to Filter, Other, Offset. And I'm just going to offset it. Well, it doesn't really matter how much, but it, that just brings what was the edges in towards the center. And now what I can do is get my rectangular marquee and I'm just going to drag out a little rectangular selection and I can see that the, well, that bit here is also the same as, as this bit here. So that's enough of an area just to copy and paste across. And I'm actually not going to copy. It's going to be edit and cut because what I want is a very clean edge and then edit and paste. And there's another clean edge. And all I need to do is move that edge across. And we've got to line everything up. So let's just drop the opacity down. We'll go and have a little close look here. Use the keyboard arrow keys, the cursor keys, just to nudge things into place. Now, it's not going to be a perfect alignment. You will find there is a slight error there. And that's, that's caused by a couple of things. It's caused by the, the panorama stitching software, which will just move things slightly, but also because when we were taking the pictures, it wasn't a fast process. So there may have been a little bit of movement, either camera movement or movement in the breeze. So you kind of expect that. I'm going to get rid of that hard jaggedy line by using the eraser tool. But notice I'm going nowhere near that sharp edge. We need to keep that sharp edge nice and sharp. Uh, bigger areas I can deal with, uh, with a larger eraser brush. And we're just blending it together so we get a, a constant coverage of image so you literally can't see the join okay now i can definitely see the join here and that's important we're going to need that join in a second but let's go to layer and we'll merge this down again so we're back to one single layer now we've got the excess area here and we can get rid of that excess area simply by making a selection of that area so let's go nice and tight Make sure we get right up to the edge, right up to the very edge of the pixels there and come down. OK, so there we go. That will be enough. OK, and then we can go up to edit and cut that area out. And that's going to give us a very clean edge and it'll be exactly the same edge as on the other side. So now we can actually make a 360 degree panorama that is pixel perfect. 
all we have to do is go back to filter, go back to other, go back to offset, and we'll offset it again. Doesn't matter how much, the same amount will be fine. We've got these large checkerboard areas left and right, and we get rid of those really easy. I like this bit. Uh, let's go to image, trim, and we'll trim based on transparent pixels. Okay, and that trims it down. Lovely. So now the left and right will match up perfectly. Okay, we've got a few transparent pixels, tops and bottom. Now you could clone those out if you wish, but I've got enough depth here that I can just crop those away. So we'll just carefully crop those away. Trying to leave a reasonable amount. We don't want to crop too much if we can possibly get away with it. Okay, so uh, that looks pretty good. Just have a quick look. Make sure you haven't left any transparent holes. There's a small one there, for example. So we'll just clone that out with a bit of spot healing. There we go. Okay, and now all we need to do is to make our little planet. And our little planet is made by going up to image and down to image size. And on image size, make sure constrain proportions is unticked. And I'm going to put a width of 3,500 pixels and a height of 3,500 pixels. Yes, I'm making a square image. It all looks a bit weird, but don't worry, that's fine. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, let's go to uh, Edit, Transform, and we'll rotate this 180 degrees so it's upside down. And to make the little planet, we use Filter. Then we use Distort, Polar Coordinates, rectangular to polar as the option there and hit the OK button and there it is there is my little planet all I need to do is just flip it around so let's use a bit of free transform and we'll rotate my planet around I can spin it wherever I like about there looks good so the final touch is just to fill in the edges where you have a slight checkerboard pattern coming through so all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select a foreground color that is the same as that color around the edge, which is just a light gray. And then I'll paint it in with a paintbrush. So we'll just get a paintbrush and we'll just paint that area in. Now you could do something like using the clouds filter just to create your own little clouds in there. Uh, it all depends on the sky that you have in your photo. That's a nice sort of quick way of getting your little planet to have a nice, neat sky. So last thing to do is just go in nice and close, have a really close look. Hopefully you shouldn't see any lines or joins, but if you do, if you do get a little sort of one or two pixel join, just use the clone tool or the spot healing brush to remove it. But mine looks pretty good. Can't see any joins. Excellent. I do have this sort of pinched area in the middle, and I'm just going to use the spot healing brush just to tidy that up with uh, a little bit of new pixels going in there. Um, not sure that one worked for me, so let's just try that again. There we go. Yeah, and that's lovely. And that hopefully will give me the effect of my little kind of motorway, freeway going through the middle of my, my little planet like so. So there you go, there's how you can create your very own little planet using a 360 degree panorama and a bit of fun inside of Photoshop. Now if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos from Adorama, the amazing camera store people, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button and subscribe so you get a regular video. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Take and Make Great Photos is brought to you by Adorama, the place for everything photography. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.